Okay. Fuzz, there's a battle going on here between naturalism and what God is saying that he just created. And the fossil record is always supposed to be this proof for evolution that we've got the transitions from lower to higher forms and so on. But the fact is the fossil record, is that what it shows? Well, the fossil record, in my opinion, provides very powerful evidence for biblical creation. Because in terms of general features, you see sudden appearance of new forms, sudden appearance of major groups. Whenever there is a, a, a mammals appear, when birds appear multiple times in the fossil record, in the Cretaceous and in the Tertiary, you see this explosion of diversity. They're called radiations, but in the very narrow window of time, there's this explosion of forms. You see an, an, a no transitional form, so to speak. You see uh, stasis. Once these forms appear, they remain unchanged for hundreds of millions of years in some cases, or tens of millions of years at least. This is exactly what you'd expect to see if biblical creation was true, and in this type of fossil evidence is completely in contradiction to the predictions you'd make for the theory of evolution. Okay, Hugh, in every one of the, uh, uh, the biology textbooks, the students will be told that whales and horses are great transitional animals to look at, okay? In other words, this shows us the evolutionary line going up. You say whales are one of the worst illustrations. How so? And horses as well. Horses I as mean, well. We do see what look like lots of transitional forms for the whale line and the horse line. Uh, but in terms of looking at how you would get a species changing into a different species through natural selection mutation, you're going to need a species to make that e process efficient enough to have an extremely large population. The larger the population, the more opportunities you have for mutational advance. Uh, you want creatures that are relatively small in body size because so they won't have to eat very much, less subject to changes in the environment. And you want it to be able to react quickly and to take advantage of these mutational changes, which means the generation time must be relatively brief. The problem with whales and horses is they have an enormous body size, very low population levels relative to other species of life, and their generation time is long. Furthermore, whales and horses do not produce very many progeny uh, per adult pair. And so for these four reasons, we would look at whales and horses as being the worst evolvers that we see in the fossil record. They would have very slow rates of evolutionary advance. Moreover, they're the species most subject to natural extinction. The bigger you are, the smaller your population, the longer your generation time, the more subject you are to disasters in the natural environment that would lead to extinction. In fact, uh, some ecologists calculate that for a whale species, its extinction time is on the order of a million years or less. In fact, in the 20th century, we've seen several whale species go extinct. 